Thank you for auditing Professor Sky's record review. Now, usually I just review new music, but I am also a real deal professor of French who also teaches a couple classes in English. One class that I teach in English is on French rock and roll and hip hop. And yesterday I had a very important class about the relationship between right wing, hyper free market capitalistic values and gangster rap, which essentially makes gangster rap a form of right wing rap. Now in France, this connection is very explicit and well understood, in America less so. So this is a very important lesson for my students, which I conduct everything uh, remotely because of COVID, and I completely forgot to record my class. Total mistake. So here's what I'm doing. I'm uploading this video to the private Facebook group of my students, and I'm also releasing it on Facebook. I mean, on YouTube, because I think it's kind of important uh, to get these messages out there. I think this is an important difference. And I think it's an important thing to study and understand about hip hop globally and about hip hop in France. So why don't you come along with me as I share uh, my, my PowerPoint, as I share uh, what I shared with my students yesterday. The primary difference is going to be that I'm not able to play the music for you, unfortunately. Um, the copyrights, whenever I play more than one song on a on a video, they just immediately get taken off of both Facebook and YouTube. So I'm just gonna read the lyrics to you. I won't have the same flow, but what you can do is you can just open up another YouTube uh, uh, window and get ready to type in the songs and find them. They're all great songs, they're all worth listening to. So let's get into this. Let's get into the concept of right wing rap here on November 11th, Wednesday, which was yesterday. The person over here is uh, Nicolas Sarkozy. Okay, and Nicolas Sarkozy is a center-right to right-wing politician who was president of France. Uh, and on the right here, we see Booba, who is a very famous, one of the most famous best-selling French rappers of all time, and especially over the last 20 years. And I'm gonna be analyzing and showing the similarities between them and their worldview, while comparing that with America and the history of gangster rap here. So let's get into it, let's get into it further. Um, First, I have to actually know how to use my computer. Oh, yes. Uh, one similarity we can just kind of start off with is they both like to walk around with their shirts off. Uh, here's Sarkozy saying, whoa, nice abs, Booba, because uh, Booba also likes to walk around with the shirt off. That's a silly joke. None of my students laugh at my jokes. It's because they're not funny. They're not supposed to be funny. They're supposed to keep you uh, attentive. So let's talk a little bit about this correlation, this relationship between gangster rap and right-wing values. Now, the way that I start this class, and the way that I start this thinking is by presenting this theory, which is not mine, I've picked it up over the years, it's been pretty well understood, about the relationship between right-wing values and gangster rap. And I think one way to think about it is if we go back to the year of 1988 in the United States, we can see it as a breaking point, as a crossroads, where we had two very influential and powerful albums. It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back by Public Enemy, and Straight Outta Compton by NWA, okay? And in a way, I think we could say that America had to make a choice. American rappers had to make a choice. Are they going to follow the path of public enemy, very politically conscious, very socially minded, uh, upsetting the power system, or are they gonna follow NWA, embracing the values of uh, free market capitalism, uh, reveling in crime, and being gangsters? And as I think you know, what's happened is American hip hop has largely followed NWA and groups like Public Enemy have been reduced to being seen as the alternative or the not mainstream hip hop. It was not always the case. As a kid, both of these groups, when I was younger, both these groups had equal importance and you listened to them at the same time and didn't even really understand that there was a real fundamental difference between them. So let's just take some of their lyrics as an example as to why this different exists, why this difference exists. And in order to get to that, I wanna talk about the true godfathers of gangster rap. Now, if you're a rap fan like me, you might be sitting there thinking, well, Ice-T was super important back in LA you know, in his early days before he was on CSI, or, or, or maybe School ED, you know, PSK, what does it mean? That's kind of the first gangster rap song, but I wanna take it in a totally different direction. I would say, the real godfathers of gangster rap are these two people. You see, that was supposed to be dramatic when I hit this button, but it didn't work. Are these two people, Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. They created the ethos of gangster rap. They didn't create it, but they helped to 
uh, push American civilization to embrace the mentality of gangster rap while also helping to create the material conditions that would create the conditions for gangster rap to be created. I'm not just gonna say that without evidence or without explanation, let's go a little bit further into it. Here's a great uh, uh, campaign slogan from Reagan Bush in 1980, uh, let's make America great again. That was new back then as a slogan. Uh, there are general policies, and I'm gonna be uh, sort of going a little bit grosso modo here. I'm gonna be saying this in a way that's a little bit generalizing, a little bit simplifying. Um, I should have a little caveat that I grew up hating Ronald Reagan. Uh, my, in my household, it, like his name was just a, was a dirty word. Um, so I am slightly biased against him and his policies. It is not my intention to say that his policies are good or bad. There are many things that Reagan did which are unambiguously good, many things which are unambiguously bad. That is not my intention on this channel, that's not my intention in my class. However, it is my job, I believe, to point out actions and their consequences. So I'm gonna to present to you some of the actions and some of the consequences. So let's get to some of the basic ideas. Primarily, small government. Okay, Reagan is the one who's famous for saying that the worst thing you can ever hear is I'm from the government and I would like to help you. Okay, that's one of his primary policies and related to that is the belief that we must privatize businesses, take businesses out of the public sector, no longer funded by taxes, but instead funded by private industry. In theory, the competition will create better businesses at a cheaper price. Okay, it's not my interest to say whether or not this is true or not we'll see the impact that it's going to have very soon. Cutting social programs, social programs like entitlements, uh, trying to uh, reduce welfare, trying to reduce programs that are designed to create some kind of social net for those uh, who are in the lower socioeconomic brackets because that money should be, people should not have to pay for other people's well-being. That's one of the philosophies. Part of that is lower taxes. You know, and again, I talk about this as a homeowner who pays like $19,000 a year in home in like taxes. It sucks. It sucks paying taxes. It's the worst. I don't ever blame anybody for not wanting to pay taxes. It's totally understandable. But of course, if one doesn't believe in where the taxes are going, it makes sense to cut the taxes. But if you believe in having a larger government, a government which provides more social programs, more services, the higher taxes go to pay for things. Like in my case, I live in Rochester, the roads are always paid, are always cleared off of snow. So I know that my taxes help to make sure that I, back when I used to go to work, I could get to work. Very tough on crime, especially on drugs. The war on drugs was officially declared under the uh, Reagan era. Um, as always, it's not a great idea to declare war on an idea or a thing because you can't win a war on terrorism or a war on drugs, but in particular, this led into a lot of policies that would lead to mass incarceration, which as you hopefully know, are one of the primary themes and creations uh, that led to gangster rap and many of its themes. Minimal government oversight on finance, meaning that if you were on Wall Street, if you were making a lot of money, there'd be less people trying to stop you from making that money, less people looking over you, making sure that you were doing the right things. All of this leads into a kind of hyper-capitalist view, a sort of hyper-free market view. And the basic idea is this, we can trickle down. If the people at the top are allowed to keep all the money, that money will make its way down to the people who are lower. I'm not going to say this theory doesn't work. I'm not interested in giving judgments. I will say this theory did not work. I'm not saying it couldn't, but pretty unequivocally, it did not work. The idea of giving the rich as much money as possible and it going down to the bottom, we have tangible evidence that this did not happen. If we look at the change in share of income in the United States by group, I don't wanna start sounding like Bernie Sanders here, but this blue line is the absolute richest people in the country, and then here is the rest. And we see the way that it's changed, and we see that right around 1980 with the election of Ronald Reagan, it just spiraled and went out of control. This is not a partisan thing. Bill Clinton, the Democrat, contributed to this as well. There's been no political party that has seriously tried to stop this. This belief in trickle-down economics has been nearly universal since 1980. 
and is very hard to fight against. And we see the very concrete results of this. Again, how is Ronald Reagan and George Bush the creators of gangster rap? Partly because these material conditions, the fact that what we're seeing is this average household income of the richest going up and it either going down or staying the same for the rest of the country. This 27% rise in urban poverty since 1980 is what we are talking about. When we hear NWA talking about selling crack in Compton, or when we hear Jay-Z rapping about selling crack in Brooklyn, it is because of these, partly because of these policies. So what are the general messages of the Reagan-Bush era? Okay, of this style of conservative right-wing philosophy. Again, it is not my interest to say if it is good or bad. It is my interest to try to distill it in a way that can be understood. If you disagree with me, I would like you to tell me. You can even tell me in an angry way. You can call me all sorts of names if you want in the comments or even in class if you're one of my students, okay? This is a dialogue. This is, I mean, this is a monologue because <laughs> you can't talk back to me, but I'd like it to be a dialogue. If I'm oversimplifying, or if you think that I am just some kind of brainwashing nightmare, please let me know, okay? And I should also say, I do not speak on behalf of my college. I speak on behalf of myself. I've never said the name of the place where I work on this channel for that reason, because I speak for me. So what is the Reagan-Bush message, okay? If we could distill it, the government won't get in your way. Great, the government won't help you. Huh, okay, that makes sense. You're on your own. You are in charge of yourself. Hmm. To a certain extent, this creates a dog-eat-dog -dog mentality, where we look out for ourselves and we take care of ourselves, and if every individual is good enough and strong enough, they will be okay. Get yours, get paid. Get yours, get paid. Hmm. You see where I'm going with this? Now, if we look at Public Enemy back in 1988, or 89, was this released in 89? It was 88 or 89, right around there. If you're following uh, for my class, you'll notice I'm not too hung up on these details of exact dates. What's important is it's in this era. If we look at the lyrics, which I would play for you, but unfortunately, uh, I don't wanna get copyright strike. It's a beautiful song. The song is Fight the Power, one of the most popular songs, because I'm black and I'm proud, I'm ready and hyped, plus I'm amped. Most of my heroes don't appear on no stamps. Sample, look back and you'll find nothing but rednecks for 400 years if you check. Don't worry, be happy was a number one jam. Damn if I say it, you can slap me right here. There was a song called Don't Worry, Be Happy. It was a number one jam in America. They're saying, worry, don't be happy. Let's get this party started right. Come on, what we got to say. Power to the people, no delay. Let's take a second to really focus on this line in a very popular rap song in the late 1980s, power to the people. Not power to the me, not no one man should have all this power, power to the people. Make everybody see in order to fight the powers that be, fight the power. We've got to fight the powers that be. I'm sorry, my flow is not as good as Chuck D. It's not as good as, it's not as good as Terminator X. I don't have a flow. So what's important here is the nature of these lyrics. It's very, it's like a lot of early hip hop, a lot of the old school, it's about collective well-being. It's about taking the people who have been marginalized by society, been marginalized by politics, by racism, by geographical prejudice, and lifting them up, giving power to the people. This is fundamentally at odds with all those values I just explained that were dominating in American politics get yours, the go-go 80s, the yuppies, all those hippies in the 60s who all of a sudden are just becoming just like everyone else, just as selfish as their parents. So if we take from the same year, the album Straight Outta Compton, we're going to find the opposite message, okay, in a track like Dope Man. Now, if you know this album, Straight Outta Compton, you probably know it best for the song F-U-C-K, The Police. Okay? which is no doubt a very rebellious song and a very revolutionary song. I don't want to simplify and say that NWA are not revolutionary in any way. But fundamentally, by putting forth the image of the crack dealer as a hero, as an anti-hero, it is completely supporting right-wing policies 
and hyper free market capitalism. I think if we look at who is the greatest superhero of America in the 21st century, a lot of people are going to raise their hand and say Batman. Other people are going to raise their hand and say Iron Man. It's not Marvel. It's not DC. It's NWA. It's the crack dealer. The crack dealer is the American icon of our age. Okay. That's the new cowboy. All right. This is the character who lives for himself, who goes for himself, who's an outlaw and who manages to succeed despite all the things against him. That is the great Reaganite hero is the crack dealer. Let's take some, some lyrics written by uh, Ice Cube from the song Dope Man, where he's talking about being a crack dealer. And let's compare this with the message of power to the people. I'm going to have to censor myself quite a bit. I don't like to swear in class if I can avoid it. Uh, yes. It was once said by a man who couldn't quit. Dope man, please, can I have another hit? The dope man said, cluck, I don't give a it. If your girl kneels down and you know, what you can read there. It all happened and the guy tried to choke her. Mm, you know what? Living in a cash selling to smokers. That's the way it goes. That's the name of the game. Young brothers getting over by slanging cane, by selling cocaine. Gold around his neck, 14K, he has it. Mm -hmm, on his mm -hmm, 24K, plus he's making money, keep the base heads waiting. Rolling 6-4 with the fresh ass Dayton's talking about his car. Living in Compton, California, CA, his Uzi up your ass if you don't get paid. Clocking much dollars on the first, and I mean, uh, mm, begging for credit, he's knocking out teeth. Clocking much dollars on the first and 15th. Look at how sparse, look at how dramatically different this is in its messaging, okay? This character, this hero, this crack dealer who's selling this money is getting over by selling cane. He is looking out for himself. It's dog eat dog. And your only relationship to him is the relationship of someone who is being preyed upon. I can take your money. I can take your girlfriend. I can take everything because of this little unit of consumables that I have that I can, that I can use to control you. Clocking much dollars on the 1st and 15th, that's payday. Okay, So he's actually consolidating all the wealth of his neighborhood. Theoretically, also, that might be a time where someone might be getting even those checks from the government, those diminishing checks from the government. Everything is about money. And that's a line later on in the song. It's all about that money. Fight. F the police. Very, very revolutionary. But this song is completely in line with Reagan and Bush and their policies and the policies that have followed since by Clinton and Obama and every other politician who has allowed this kind of extreme free market capitalism to have a stranglehold on our country. The material conditions and the ethos are provided by conservative right-wing free market capitalism. That's the value of the crack dealer. That's the revolution of the crack dealer. It's also just worth mentioning, you know, that Flavor Flav, a member of NWA, uh, of uh, Public Enemy, has been turned into a joke by his appearances on TV. I think that's one of the most racist things that's happened with hip hop, is taking these stars who used to be dangerous, who used to represent real revolution, and turning them into just funny little goofy, like laughing people. I mean, we even have Ice Cube, I would say, is a good example on CSI or Flavor Flav or even Ice Cube here, like becoming a TV star, like a funny, goofy guy. This is the guy who released the album America KKK's Most Wanted, one of the best, most politically minded hip hop uh, albums of all time. And here he is just goofing around for the camera being a friendly dad, right? Coming out and defending in some ways Donald Trump. Okay. It's an interesting idea, this sort of complete co-opting of these great stars. Uh, it's worth mentioning that in NWA, there was a member called Eze, e and he was the only member who was a certified criminal and a certified former crack dealer. And I'm not going to show you this clip from the news. You can look it up, but I will show you this, news, this newspaper clipping. Uh, he had lunch with George Bush, senior. He had lunch with him. He was a Republican. He didn't want to pay taxes. Why would a crack dealer who literally makes his living off of the misery and desperation of others want to pay taxes? 
the relationship between these is not, is not like tangential. It is straight in line. It is completely consistent. It is entirely internally consistent to be a crack dealer and a very conservative right-wing Republican. I know that sounds weird, but it's the way of thinking about it. And it's part of what I'm trying to, uh, trying to get across here. And as we'll see, it's something that the French understand in a deep and real way. I ask my students, has this changed? And for the most part, they say no. I mean, obviously hip hop is very, very vast. The mainstream is vast. And if you watch my channel, I talk about all sorts of groups that do all sorts of things, right? So obviously it's a very vibrant, a very vibrant community. Uh, mainstream rap has a lot of trap artists who still do this and a lot of other rappers who don't like Drake, but still fundamentally, this message of absolute hyper-capitalism, I would say can, has continued unabated. So let's get to the Sarkozy era in France. After the election of Nicolas Sarkozy, what happened in France? Okay, so the thing to understand is that Sarkozy was elected in 2007 and it was, a, they have a five year period of presidency, doesn't really matter, um, but it was sort of seen as a real return to a much more conservative mentality. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna to listen to two different artists in the same way that we did, we're not gonna to listen to, you're gonna to listen to me clumsily give my translations of their music. Sorry, it's not my fault that copyright goblins are so terrible. Uh, um, talking about I Am and their album Saison 5 from 2007 and 0.9 by Booba from 2008. And we're gonna see how this has changed. And the most important thing to understand is that gangster rap in France did not properly exist until the early 2000s. Even though France is the number two country in the world for creating hip hop, even though its hip hop has often surpassed America in its quality, the themes of gangster rap did not appear, did not truly appear until the early 2000s. Groups that were considered hardcore and gangster, like NTM, whose name means F your mother, even they were talking about putting away guns and not being criminals. And they were talking about their people and they were trying to give power to the people. So I'm just gonna move a little bit out of the way, the sun here. I'm not liking the way it's bouncing off my five head. <clears throat> so let's listen to and let's compare some of these musicians and their out and their view. Now, first of all, let's look at the way that I would define Sarkozy's policies. Much like, much like uh, Reagan and Bush, he was for smaller government. He was for privatizing more businesses. He was for cutting social programs, lowering taxes. Now, this should be said that in France, it is way different than in America. These social programs are way bigger. The bureaucracy is way bigger. The social net, social safety net is way bigger. You could definitely make an argument that some of the changes that Sarkozy was calling for were very much legitimately needed. Now, whether or not they should be in place, I don't know. I'm not here to tell you that, but I will say at least theoretically, that's the way he was seen. He's very tough on crime, very tough on immigration, which if you've been studying this class and you've been studying this channel, you will know that most of the rappers uh, in France are first or second generation immigrants. And mostly Sarkozy was a believer in free market capitalism and his nickname was President Bling Bling. They took the term from BG, the American rapper, to define Sarkozy. That, that, that he believed so much in these theories that that was how he was seen. Oh my God, my, my new refrigerator is really in view now. It's okay, so is, so is my harp. All right, well, my daughter's harp. Uh, also, we see here his, uh, his xenophobic, uh, this is a political cartoon that shows his xenophobia and his anti-immigration stance. So let's see how this plays in relationship to an artist like Booba, okay? Uh, if we listen to, wait, no, stop. How do I stop this from playing? Okay, wait, no, I'm gonna try to stop this here. Okay, I'm gonna go through these lyrics briefly. Some of them are quite complicated. Beta, Omega, Omega, Beta, Alpha. That's just his name in, you know, in, in that speech. I'm too good for the beef. 
Ganig, so he's using the Verlon, the syllable inverting slang of French rap. You think I'm going to unch, you think I'm going to unch pa alpha, you think you're going to punch me. I have Soso's Coke, Al Pacino's class. So he's talking about dealing Coke and being like Al Pacino, four by four. I not do no, even if I'm really stoned. If there are these mm -hmm, everywhere, it's because I'm in the club. If it, I'm not even going to read this line because I'm in your mm. MCs go through shopping carts at actually said Carrefour and Rite Aids. We're going to keep going on here. I eat only meat. F your mother villa on the beach. I'm in the Barbados submachine gun semi-auto at the house. Leg lock effer kick like Shamak. You vote for the FN. You vote for the left. You vote for the right. Me. I ass F the state and have a naked ass on the hammock. In front of the police, we shut up because we don't know, squeal on us, we pull out an AK-47. The thematics of this are at great odds with the thematics of French hip hop previous to this. Mentioning and glorifying in guns, first of all, it's highly inauthentic because of the low amount of guns in France, this country with very, very stringent gun, uh, gun control policies. And this whole idea of selling coke and being this, it's all just kind of an imitation. It's not very authentic. And for the most part, French rap has been defined by its authenticity of expressing the experiences in the lower socioeconomic classes, in the immigrant population, in the suburbs, in the disadvantaged suburbs, and in the disadvantaged parts of every city. But here we have him, and he's just posturing. And I'll show you this a little bit of the video. Hopefully, uh, I won't get, uh, I won't get uh, copyright struck. I'll just kind of show you just the beginning so you can see the way that he's posing and being super proud here. Uh, with with all of his uh, all this money, that's not him. That's not him. But there he is. He's going. Well, actually, wait. it's worth saying. It starts off with him counting money, and all these images of his clothing company uncut. So much like an American rapper, he's all about being a small businessman, and he's all about counting money, and he's about having these helicopters and having all these rich people and these big cars all over the place, still showing off the people from his neighborhood, still showing off the diversity of French culture, still valorizing or putting into importance uh, the presence of immigrants and children of immigrants in France, still doing all those positive things that French rap is able to do, but still, but now doing it in this way that seems to really be make, no, I don't want to get copyright striked, that still shows this really hyper-capitalistic view. Uh, if we particularly pay attention to this one line, we see how far French rap has gone. You vote for the FN, you vote for the left, you vote for the right. Me, I ask F the state on a hammock. So here he's saying, it doesn't matter if you vote for the left or you vote for the right. I don't care. I'm rich. I'm, on a, I'm in a hammock. He's literally saying just like, I don't care. It's really worth emphasizing for those of you who have not taken my class, what the FN is. This is the Front National. We can call it the National Front. This is a hyper right wing political party in France, which is explicitly anti immigrant, explicitly racist. Over the years, that's been nuanced, that's tried to be changed, they've been softened, their image has changed, but it is uh, far right in a way that no American audience can actually understand. America would not permit a party this far right this high in, uh, to have this much influence in public discourse. It just wouldn't. No matter what your opinions are of the Republican Party, it is not actually comparable. As an example, I will show you a few of the posters of the National Front to show what they're trying to communicate. This is their most famous slogan, France for the French people. What does that imply? That implies that if you're not white, you're not French. Therefore, you should get out of France make French things with French people. This looks like the village people. Uh, the National Front, it's you. We notice how white everybody is, how it's the resistance. It's fighting against all of these terrible things and all these changes. This particular image is my personal favorite because of a personal story, uh, which let me see how much time I have. I think I will tell you the story. Mm, sure, I'll tell you the story. I might've told this on the channel before, but it bears repeating. I was once walking around in a bad part of France. 
uh, it was like kind of a ghetto in the northern suburbs of Marseille. And I was walking around there with a friend of mine, an American friend, and as we go to the metro to go back home, we see this poster. And I'm gonna have to swear in order to properly translate this poster. This poster, which has a car racist cartoon of an Arab with a, uh, with a pit bull carrying a baseball bat is clearly designed to enrage and make the people who see it afraid of the immigrant and all immigrants. This is the National Front, the Jeunesse, with Le Pen. Le Pen, who is the leader, uh, the father Le Pen used to be the leader of the National Front. It is now his daughter who is the leader of the National Front. And this says, without exaggeration, you fuck France. Get the fuck out. I see this poster. These posters are all over the place in France, these kinds of political posters. I see this poster and I'm with my friend Aaron and I look at it and I go, wow, this is messed up. I can't believe this. And I turn around and I see these two kids on a motor scooter, two North African kids of North African descent on a motor scooter. They look at us. We look at them. I kind of look at this like, I don't agree with this. <laughs> this is not good. Je n'aime pas. Je ne suis pas d'accord. C'est pas bon tout ça. <laughs> okay. And then they go off. And, we, and we, we get, we get, to, the, we get to the, the, open the door to leave, right? We get to the door to leave. Uh, and as we open the door, we hear the sound of broken glass. We turn around and we see there's a stoplight. And at the stoplight is a little old white French lady whose window was just broken by those same two guys who are on the motor scooter. Smashed her window, reached across her, grabbed her pocketbook and sped off in their scooter. This was a chicken and the egg moment that made me look up into the sky and say, who is directing this movie? This is an Ouroboros. This is a snake eating its tail, okay? Were the people who saw that pushed to criminality because they knew they would never be accepted in France after seeing a poster like this? Or does a poster like this exist? Does that woman going to become a member of the National Front because those people who are pushed to criminality thereby confirmed this prejudice to her and she's now going to vote for the national front because of this attack on her who what is the chicken what is the egg spoiler the chicken and the egg is america's po is france's post uh, colonial past but we're not going to get into that now but still it's a fascinating moment in which the entire drama of france played out before my very eyes of assimilation, integration, immigration, all these things happening at once. And it was so unbelievably sad to be able to see this. So this National Front is counting on events like this and is counting on these posters, alienating and marginalizing the immigrant population while motivating and um, engaging whatever racism might exist in France. So I go back to Bouba's statement. You vote for the left, you vote for right, you vote for the FN, I don't care. I don't care if me, the son of a, of a Senegalese immigrant who grew up in a very bad part of Paris, who has had to suffer through racism and marginalization, I don't care about us. Us? I'm on a hammock. I'm good. I'm on a hammock. And it's not just him either. <laughs> but it's, we'll, we'll talk about that more. It's also important to note how prevalent this group is. In the French political system, and this is review for some of my students, this will be new for my auditors on YouTube, uh, the French political system is very different. Uh, they have tons of different parties, not just two, and then they have a runoff election of the top two choices. This leaves groups like the National Front the ability to get into the and to get into the runoff election fairly easily because they jump out, they stand out from the rest. So in 2002, uh, Jacques Chirac had to run against Le Pen, the guy, the guy who was responsible for that poster I showed you, you fuck France, get the fuck out. And this guy over here, Jacques Chirac, was a, was a right-wing politician himself who used to say bad things about immigrants as well, talked about how they smelled bad and how they made too much noise. But still, people in France, if they wanted to support the France that they believed in, which was not a uniformly white France, was not a racist France, had to go out and vote for a right-wing politician. I think this is part of the reason why French rap went further to the right, because clearly French society was going further to the right. In 2017, 
Le Pen's daughter ran for president and she got 34.5% of the, of the vote. So if we compare those two from 17.8 to 34.5, if it continues at this pace, the National Front might even win the presidency of France, which would be a very big event. Let's take another example. Another French rapper, very popular, uh, son of Moroccan immigrants, La Fruine, again from the French suburbs, very similar experience as most French rappers has had. He has a song just called Red Bull and Vodka, which will get stuck in your head forever if I play it for you. It's just him saying Red Bull and Vodka just over and over and over again. Once he actually gets to the song itself, let's see what he talks about. Red Bull and Vodka, Red Bull and Vodka, 1996, pit bulls and fights. He actually uses the Arabic word, hagra. So fulfilling that whole stereotype of the pit bull and the fighting. Red Bull and Vodka, you got ripped off. What do we do when confronted with Sarkozy and Marine Le Pen? We don't vote explicitly saying we don't vote. So let's see what the message is. First of all, consumer goods, selling cocaine, having big cars and jewels, that's what matters, okay? What matters is being rich. These values of hypercapitalism are what matter. What political representation should we have? We don't care. Don't even vote, it doesn't matter. Why doesn't it matter to me? Because I'm rich, I've got me. These values, have been extended and absorbed by this section of French hip hop in the same way it was absorbed in American hip hop in the late 1980s. Now, one interesting thing, and we can get to this song, Rap de Droite by I Am, is that in France, it's explicitly understood this correlation. In America, it's only eggheads like me and other uh, social commentators who insist on this correlation between the values of conservative politics and the values of gangster rap. But in France, I am, and I made another video about them, which I, I will link up above. Um, they're my favorite French rap group. They're the reason that I study French, literally. I would not speak French now if it weren't for I am. They have a song from 2007 in which they make this link explicit. I'm going to give you the lyrics here. Diamonds on the outside, cash money, a show of wealth, silicone, boobs and uninhibited girls, the Audis, the BMWs, the Hummers and the Mercedes, the leather show of Versace threads, the mythological ego, the breeding, the race, the combat, the fangs, the dogs, the clothes and the brands and the markets and the euros and the dough, the guns paraded in front of the camera, homies carrying the hater aid, position on the mooring dock, not easy at all times, I try to escape the advertising. So he's trying to escape the advertising but he can't because it's in the middle of his music. Daily life pushes, now the pressure, I have to open, it's worse than a mugging. So now the, in the videos, you gotta count your money. All of these values that he's trying to escape by participating in an art form, which traditionally is about lifting people out of poverty and talking about the issues that face them. Instead, he has to be confronted constantly with money and cars and counting and brands and brands and advertising. We big up these towers, these blocks that blot the landscape, the hood, the streets, the bars, the cities we stare at. We are jealous, we hate, we spit, we moan, we speak ill. In this sense, France is in our veins. We are good countrymen. So here, the value of French hip hop, the value of all hip hop is partly to be the voice of the voiceless and also to speak truth to power. But in this way, he's making it explicit that by saying all these things, by turning rap into this, we are becoming good French countrymen we are becoming the thing that we are supposed to be opposing. The state produces the crime by force and in front of it, we are creating force by crime. We compel, we impose, we silence the cries, we keep the creation of, of righteous rap so close to the start, so close to death, the colors melt and everyone talks. You hear towel heads, just you can read the rest of that. Okay, I don't like saying racial slurs on my channel, okay? C-H-I-N-K-S-N-I-G-G-E-R-S and C-R-A-C-K-E-R-S. You would think yourselves at the Renaissance Fair, at the FN or the UMP. So the Renaissance Fair should make sense to you, but it is true that this usage of racial slurs has gone way up in French rap. In the past, it would only really be ever used to refer to yourself. In, in recent years, in the last 20 years, it's become much more coarse. 
much, much, much more coarse. And we see that in here, and he's expressing his frustration. You think that you're at an FN rally, the National Front. Remember the images that I just showed you? Or the UMP, which is Sarkozy's policy. But no, you're not there. Where are you, I am? You've put yourself right in the middle of French rap. And then in the chorus, he says quite beautifully, ammunition, guns, and bullets, it's right-wing rap. Submissive or naked women, it's right-wing rap. Corruption complicity, it's right-wing rap. Shocking slogans, posters for a good right-wing rap. Real fascists, fake rebels. Now this, find this song, would you? Rap de droite by I Am. Listen to it, it's a great song. This is the line that gets me. They're fake rebels. NWA ended up being fake rebels. Gangster rappers are fake rebels because they support the system so clearly. Real fascist, fake rebels. Too much hot air cocktails, it's right wing rap. Big mouth, no ear, it's right wing rap. Slowly, life is formatting us for a good right wing rap. Thank you, I am, for making this explicit. As a closing note, I'm just going to read you two separate quotes, one from Sarkozy and one from Buba. And just note how insanely similar they are. Me, I'm for the idea that everyone gets off their ass and tries to get out if you don't like where you are. I didn't stay on a bench waiting for my welfare check. Me, I didn't expect anything from the government. Those who rely on the state are weak. Social security, welfare, it's well and good, but it's created a weak generation. These guys have no ambition. Sarkozy tells us the solution to unemployment is working. I believe in working. I believe in merit. I believe in energy. Earn more because you work more. When welfare pays more than work, we are demoralizing France. I want to free the people who are today prisoners of social assistance. Could they possibly be more in lockstep? Could this be more of a Venn diagram of opinion? I don't know. So there's the end of the class. There's the end of the video. Please do leave some comments if you have some ideas. If you're taking this class for credit for me, you really need to understand this concept, okay? That French rap has changed. And as I always talk about, music reflects life. Music reflects society. This societal shift is seen everywhere. Okay, well, until next class, until next video, there's the camera.